Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial, my name is The Tempster. Today I'm going to be going over how to add a cutscene to your game in the Blender Game Engine. Now previously I did do a tutorial on this, but this was adding a video cutscene. So in this tutorial we'll be going over adding a real-time cutscene. So basically one that happens in-game. So the final result will look something like this. Uh, we have a player who can move around, and then once he collides with a certain object, he will lock into a path move towards something and the camera will look at a certain point. Then once that point has been met, start animation will change to true and you can play any sort of cutscene animations you want to play. So let's go ahead and get started. So file new, make a new blend file and in here what we're going to do is blend a game engine, GeoSL, animation frame rate of 60, if I type that in correctly, delete the cube, add ourselves a plane, this is going to be the floor so Maybe call it floor, not glow. And then let's go ahead and add ourselves some light. So Hemi, we can go over and do texture view. It's looking a bit nicer. All right, so on the floor here, add a new material, no specular. Go to the texture tab and open up a random texture. All right, and then once you've opened it up, press tab, U and unwrap. Then what we're gonna do is go just into normal view here. I'm gonna press shift A, add myself a cube, move it up. This here is gonna be my player. So let's go over to the physics, make him dynamic, an actor, collision bounds I guess. And let's select the camera here, Alt-R, get rid of the rotation, RZ90 and RY90. Then GY, move it over here, numpad 7, Z, and numpad 5 to go to orthographic view. And just put it in the center, hold down shift, select the cube, control P and parent. Alright, cool, so there's our basic player. Uh, now let's go ahead and give him some movement. Um, so keyboard W then let's give him some motion on the other side so true pulse here and so we can move forward cool so now if you press P go into texture view oh that's the wrong direction so there we go forwards now what we want to do is add another cube so this here is going to be our sort of trigger to start the cutscene so let's call it cutscene trigger and then go over to the physics static actor collision bounds uh, also make it ghost and over here just add the property cutscene then what we want to do is go over and add ourselves an empty now this empty here is going to be the sort of prime location or the location that we want our object to track to so let's just call it uh, target location so now what we need is our cube here to move towards the target location. So to do that, we're going to go over on our cube here, add ourselves a Python controller, make a new script, call it cutscene.py, import bge, cont is equal to bge.logic, dot get current, oops, controller, own is equal to cont.owner, and then also you might want to import in scene so just copy and paste this and rename it scene and then also control here rename to scene right and then basically what we want to do in here is uh, put that in there and then we want to get the location of this and if it's less than this then we want to move it towards if it's greater than we want to move it the other way so to do that we need to get the location but then the location we need to split up into x y and z components so because this will be down on a flat plane we only need the x and y components as the z is sort of irrelevant so first of all let's add in our target so target is equal to two quotation marks and basically within them you want to add your name of your target so in here just copy and paste this next line what we want to do is check if own dot world position dot x is less than scene dot objects target dot world position dot oops position dot x so i'm going to scroll in so you guys can see what i'm doing and as you'll notice, I put dot x. So at the moment, we're only dealing with the x component. So if that value is to true, so it is less than, we want to make it bigger. So own dot world position dot x plus what is equal to 
let's just make it 0.01. Now at the moment, this is very inaccurate. It will just keep going continuously. It will never be exactly the same. So what we need to do is sort of round these values off so that we have a certain amount here that we can add that will equate them both to the same thing. So easiest way to do that is type in round put a bracket around our world position dot x and then do a comma and how many decimal points you want. I'm just going to use one as it's probably the easiest and we don't need that much accuracy. So then I can use as my world position 0.05 on this side as well. Add round, select this here, then another closing bracket, a comma and one as well. So let's go ahead, select all this, control C to copy press enter, go to the next line, control V to paste, put E and L in front of here, so else if. This time we want to check whether it is greater than, and if that is true, we want to minus. All right, so copy and paste all of this again, and this time, let's give ourselves a comment, Y axes, and put a comment up here, X axes. All right, so this time we're gonna have to change the X's to Y's, and that one over there, that one over there, that one over there, and that one over there, and the last one here. All right, so that is all of that done. Now we want to check if both of these are the same. If, I guess, copy and paste this. So if this here is equal to this here, then what we want to do is set a property to true. So let's go over on our script here, give ourselves a property, First one's gonna be called go, as in we start moving to the position, and then start will make it as start animation. So maybe we'll just call this one animation, and call that one go. So on top of this, we also wanna check whether the x axis is the same. So let's copy and paste this. Control C to copy, type in and, and then paste in the next line in here, replace y with x. And then what we want to do is, as I said, change a property. Now with booleans, Blender Game Engine does something weird where you have to import in the scene to change it. So to change a boolean here, we're gonna have to type in scene.objects, uh, own.name, and then from that, we want to get the uh, property animation. So animation is equal to true. Now also, in this part, we wanna make sure that animation isn't already set to true. So and, own animation oh, animation is equal to false. So now what we want to do is run this cutscene only when go is set to true. So to do that, let's go over here, add a property when go is equal to true, and then go ahead and join the two together. This also we want to be on a true pulse. And so now we need some sort of trigger to go ahead and set go to true. So this will all run. So to do that, you'll notice this has the cutscene property. So let's go over to our cube here, add ourselves a collision for the cutscene property. And from there, we're gonna add an and, join it in here, and then add a property on this side, join it in and assign go to true. Now what we don't want to happen is our player still being able to move while he's trying to get realigned. So to do that, let's also add another property here, making sure go is equal to false. When it is equal to false, we can move around, but when it's true, then we can't move around. Now we just need one for the camera. So on the camera here, I'm gonna add myself an edit object. It's gonna be a track to, and the time will set to, or the smoothing, we can set to around four, three or four. Here we're gonna have to change a couple things. First of all, the up axis is Y, so change it to Y, and the track axis is negative Z. All right, and now we just need an object to track to, so what I'm gonna do is press Z, go into wireframe, and select this one over here. This over here is my current target location. I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate, and move it up. And this is gonna be where we want our player to look once he's reached that target location. So this here you can put maybe on an object he's meant to be focusing or interacting with. And so let's go ahead and call this target uh, view. And so then select the player here or the camera and choose target view. Then maybe make it four for the time. Hold down shift and select the player cube. And then once go is equal to true, what we also want to do is add an and 
join it in here and add it into the edit object. Now at the moment it's only on two dimensions as you can see so it will only look above that direction but it won't look down at it. So if you add 3D then it will sort of look directly at that point. Now we also want to do one more thing and that is check whether animation is equal to false because we want our camera to stop tracking once he's reached the point so that when animation is set to true then this will stop tracking. So now I'm also going to go over to the render settings, uh, choose debug properties and also select the eye here. Now one more thing we can do is give our camera some sort of movement or mouse script so over here let's add mouse look. Now we only want this to activate when go is equal to false so this here so let's go and add another and join it in and join that in. Now the go property here will have to be set to true just for the mouse look here. So now if we press P uh, we should be able to look around there's our trigger so if we move towards it uh, sort of camera will track to the right spot, will move to the right spot and then it will freeze. So once it's frozen and animation's been set to true, then now you can play whatever animation you want with the camera and with the player's arms and stuff. So there we go guys, that's the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, if your one didn't work out or something went wrong with it, there'll be a finished dot blend down in the description below if you want to go ahead and see what you did wrong. If you did enjoy the video, uh, feel free to leave a like, comment or share, it'd be greatly appreciated. If you enjoy these types of videos, then be sure to subscribe as well so you'll stay up to date. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the tutorial, have an awesome week and I'll see you guys in the next video.